Hi, this is my HP 35660A dynamic signal analyzer. You've seen this in previous videos, and it's one of countless old school bits of kit you can score on eBay or auction houses or anywhere else that still are fantastic performing instruments and very, very useful. You can get them dirt cheap. But often the problem comes if you want to actually talk to it with a PC, because all this old school stuff, Ethernet wasn't invented, USB wasn't invented. If you're lucky, it might have an old school serial port which uh, with uh, string commands which makes it easier uh, to talk to but most instruments especially uh, HP gear like this back in the day had the HPIB or the Hewlett Packard interface bus or also known as the GPIB the general purpose interface bus also known as the IEEE 4008 standard which uh, they're kind of there are differences between them but basically they're lumped into uh, the same particular standard and that's really the only way to talk uh, to these instruments. And of course, it's been the de facto industry standard for, oh, geez, I don't know. When was GPIB invented or HPIB invented? It's been around for a long time. Anyway, you'll find racks and racks of gear, even today, all networked with uh, GPIB, as I'll call it. Anyway, even modern gear like this uh, Keysight, a uh, seven and a half digit meter, it is backward compatible they sell these to companies who often have these old racks and things and they need to actually um, interface those over and there it is the GPIB interface if you see that connector on an instrument even if it doesn't have it written there it's almost certainly GPIB of course this one has LAN and USB and and things like this old uh, Philips system multimeter for example let's have a look at that there you go, GPIB. System 21, I don't know what that is. That's probably some custom interface or something. And this is just some of the other gear I've got that's uh, GPIB controllable in my lab. This is my old Keithley electrometer that is ancient. GPIB interface, brilliant. I've got my uh, one of my voltage and current uh, standards here. I've got my Keithley battery simulator, Keithley source measure unit up here. Once again, this one actually does have RS-232, uh, and this is a classic. It's the industry standard, or was the industry standard uh, source measure unit. But unfortunately, the problem is if you want to control these uh, GPIB instruments, you usually need either a USB uh, to GPIB uh, converter, which, if you buy the genuine ones, can be quite expensive. There's a flourishing uh, second hand market for those. You can also get, of course, uh, plug in ISA, old school, and uh, PCI cards from uh, National Instruments or one of the big companies that do. Uh, those cards and yeah they're fiddly and also you've got the big bulky expensive gpib cables as well if you've ever tried to use one of those bleh. and then you've got to install the correct drivers for them and they might you might have an old card an old adapter or whatever the drivers might not work with the latest windows 10 or linux or whatever and then you've got to have the software to actually talk to the driver and send the G gpib commands over and actually get something back from it and it's a really convoluted and pain in the butt process well what if you had something where you could just use your phone or your web browser to talk to your gpi instrument directly that'd be cool well ta-da here it is this is the kiss 4008 from hxx H -X engineering llc hxengineering.com i checked and their website was down so i'm not sure what the deal is there the nice uh die cast uh casing gpib connector on there and it's just got one of these uh ethernet things there'll be a little micro in there i'm not going to uh take it apart and do whatever it's got a couple of leds on there that can actually uh help you uh configure it and know the status of it powered from uh five volt USB here and it just plugs directly in to your instrument no cable no mucking around and you can talk to it just with a web browser brilliant so I'm going to plug it into the back of my uh, dynamic signal analyzer here and um, see if we can get it on our phone or a, a networked web browser this is connected via uh, Wi-Fi to my local router here so one of my viewers actually alerted me to this product. It's been a while, around a while, 2017. Uh, so I picked up 150 Yankee bucks on uh, eBay directly from uh, the designer of this thing. And it comes with a uh, quick start 
guide, nothing on the back, and a very comprehensive user guide. And KISS stands for Keep It Simple Stupid. But anyway, it's very comprehensive, especially in the various ways that you can actually connect to it. Net bias name, look up pings, um, address, DCP, uh, DHCP server, announce protocol, auto IP, network analyzer, or a bigger hammer option, which is just to actually read out the uh, flashing LED on the thing, which will give you the IP address. Absolutely brilliant. Um, thought of everything. And we're supposed to get a web interface. So let's give it a bell. So let's try the simplest solution, which is the NetBIOS name lookup, HTTP, none, none of that S rubbish. In theory, you don't have to look up the IP address of the thing. Neat. All right, please excuse the crudity of this phone capture. Didn't have time to build it to scale or to paint it. So let's put in that and see if we can get access. Site cannot be reached. Wah. So while that was a fail on my phone, I can confirm that does work on my desktop web browser. Yeah, it could be a phone or an Android thingy. So from the web browser, I do actually know the IP address now. So this should work. There we go. So yeah, that net bias domain name, well, it's Will. There it is. There we go. There's our control. That's actually um, web um, served from the little web server inside the KISS 488 itself, version 1.64. You can apparently contact the author to get uh, like new firmware versions and stuff. We can go in there and now configure Address, you can set the address here, you can set uh, whether or not, uh, what file uh, capture you want, HPGL, because another great thing about this is that it basically um, emulates a plotter or a uh, printer, and so apparently you can get traces out of this thing. So absolutely brilliant. So anyway, I'm just um, uh, command to trigger a, a screen capture. I'm just going to leave that as standard, and you can set uh, kiss address. I'm just going to leave all that as... Default, we go over to control over here, and this is our control page. There you go. And we can have up to two, four, six different uh, commands actually uh, programmed into the thing, and, or we can send them and you can save them into the embed it into the firmware of the thing itself, and then it'll give you the reply from the instrument down here. So we do have to make sure our uh, instrument is set up. In this case, uh, addressable only, analyzer address down here. Um, I've got it set to uh, 22 over here. And then the peripheral addresses, we can actually set our plotter address and our printer address as well on the GPIB bus, because the GPI, every instrument on the GPIB bus has to give an, a unique identifier number. Otherwise they conflict and bleh. All right, so let's give this a try now. I'll keep it up there so you'll be able to see like remote and talk on here. So you should be able to see those enunciators uh, change if this uh, is able to talk to it down here. So let's send the asterisk IDN, IDN command. Every GPI B instrument should understand that. But please be aware that there are massive differences between the command sets on GPI B instruments. So like IDN is probably the only major universal one so I'm going to send that command and bingo remote there you go did it return the command there it is down there winner winner chicken dinner as you can see it gives us the name of the product the uh, model number looks like the serial number and the version number that's uh, quite common this so it works hunky-dory. So we should now, in theory, be able to get the uh, programming manual for this uh, DSA and actually send any sort of command. But I've shown that it works, so, you know, it's just fine. Let's try another instrument. Let's try a more modern instrument here. Let's get this uh, Keysight 7.5 digit meter and GPIB settings. There you go, 22. Let's just keep it the same. I haven't actually uh, reset anything. I haven't reset the power to the KISS module. I've just simply transferred the cable over to here and I haven't reset any of the firmware. So I'm just gonna give this a burl. Let's go send again. And looks like it worked. Bingo, Keysight, <laughs> it talks. No workers, it just works. It's brilliant. And once again, we got the name, the model number, the serial number, and it looks like uh, firmware versions as well. So let's just try sending something, EVM, 
let's just I don't know send that it, it just happens to be default in there let's see if it sends anything back reply from instrument absolutely nothing because we're not sending the correct command so yeah I just thought I'd send that why not let's actually do measurement measure test value to see if it actually just gives us some sort of default value back or something like that no, it seemed to take too long. Nope, it didn't like that. And you can see up there, error. So that's actually a uh, GPIB command error. It didn't like that command. Of course, we could go get the programming manual for this thing and type in the correct commands. But let's try an older school, real simple instrument like this uh, system multimeter. Again, that's address 22. So I won't touch anything, haven't repowered anything, just send id command that was pretty quick and bingo whoa actually that didn't work it gave us the voltage so it this looks like this uh, philips 2534 system multimeter doesn't accept the idn command but it did return our voltage wow okay well let's send this ebm command <laughs> and bingo it's returning let's just send anything measure value send that and yep, it's just returning voltage every single time. So that's just a real old school uh, GPIB interface by the looks of it. Okay, I've hooked up a 10K resistor to that. Come on, see what we get out of that. RTW 9.9961 plus <laughs> 10 to the E plus uh, 3. So yep, that's uh, 9.999K. So you can send single commands like that, which is useful, but you can also do capture which actually has a data logger built in and i don't believe you need it actually connected to the pc it saves it internally and then you can actually uh update it later so unfortunately it only has like uh, three seconds is the minimum log time and then you can put in a custom command there to actually do it so let's actually select that and one points logged three seconds later it should two points logged there we go. So it's actually logging those values and I'll just put my fingers on here. Just give a bit of a whirl there. Unfortunately, yeah, once every three seconds. I'm not sure what the limitation is there. GPIB is uh, much faster than that. It is capable of going faster. So, And what I'm going to do now is actually uh, disconnect the um, Ethernet cable and see if it just uh, keeps on logging. Okay, it's uh, stopped updating, of course, because it can't actually connect to it. So I'll do some more wiggle, 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 yeah, on the connector to just to vary the values a bit. And then I'll reconnect it, and then we'll download the data. I haven't tried this yet. I'm assuming it can data log internally. So the KISS module is still connected into the instrument, but the Ethernet cable is disconnected. And I'll plug it back in. So let's see if it can just live connect like that let's see if it updates there it is 42 points logged yep i think it kept going all right beauty let's just go directly over to graphs aha uh -huh. there it is that's what i had there and then you can select your different logs and there it is this is where i pulled it out somewhere in here and i left it for a bit and then i started to fiddle around with it some more so there you go we've done that and then we can save that to a uh, CSV file for uh, further play. So that's kind of neat. It's got a, like a built-in uh, autonomous data logger. Unfortunately, it's a bit limited in terms of uh, you know data capture. I don't know why one second would be really handy. Oh, it saved it as a HTM. I thought it was a uh, CSV. See what we get. There we go. Raw, raw data, HTM. No problem. You can copy and paste that over to uh, straight into Excel or your favorite spreadsheet. So that's very cool. You can just uh, convert any old GPIB instrument into a web connected interface. Now, of course, this web interface is very cool, but ultimately you can only send these single uh, commands like just a one off uh, type command. You can't sequence anything. doesn't have any scripting or anything like that. But, aha, uh -huh, it has a Telnet interface down here, which allows you to uh, write your own programs, write your own scripts in any language you, you want that supports a Telnet interface, which is like a virtual uh, serial port interface to the thing. 
and the designer Steve Hendricks actually uh, told me about some a program that a uh, one of his customers has already written and here it is it's the GPIB Telnet data logger uh, I'll provide a link in uh, down below for it and here it is connected to the instrument I've had it running for a, a while here and I'm just measuring like uh, noise so this is my new key site seven and a half digit DMM and this is like the drift on uh, warm-up and you can see that so it's actually logging and there's no uh, this particular Particular login application I think like limits it to one second but in theory you can write your own applications that sample it as fast as the GPI bus will allow so you can use any programming language you want so it's just like having that uh, PCI or USB GPIB interface with the drivers and then uh, you know from the likes of National Instruments and other manufacturers that then talk to you know lab view lab windows CVI and and visual basic and all any program you like that has the driver available that actually supports that and this telnet interface and it just worked I didn't have to set anything up fantastic so there you go you can write your own scripts and everything and I'm sure all the script kiddies out there can you know <laughs> whip up a, a program in no time to talk through a telnet interface winner and of course you should be able to connect using any simple terminal program as well as long as it supports uh, telnet so I'm using TerraTerm here in this particular case so let's go in here telnet unspecified ipv4 and bingo we're in like Flynn and then we can just send commands up here here we go send to this process boom <laughs> we're in Joshua damn now unfortunately I couldn't get the screen the HP GL screen capture thing working with my HP dynamic signal analyzer I've tried all sorts of things and I just cannot get it to capture it so I don't know if it's something uh, particular with my DSA I, I haven't got the time at the moment to try and get that but suffice it to say that you can actually uh, if your product supports HP GL output or a bitmap uh, printer uh, type output you can actually capture that so that's really cool for old school instruments like this DSA if you can actually get a screen capture it's got like a three and a half inch floppy on it and things like that and so old school storage like that which still you know is not great these days to try and uh, get working and if you can capture get screen captures to put in documentation and things like that absolutely fantastic but unfortunately I can't get it working but I'm sure it does work um, Steve's got it on his website and you know like screen captures and things like that I'm just probably doing something dumb if I do get it working I might update you on the uh, second EV blog 2 channel and you can potentially configure like a uh, screen capture command in here a GPIB uh, command in there and then when you're in the capture part you can just go screen capture it'll execute that and it will uh, extract the file out and then you go over to graphs here and you should be able to actually select your bitmap or HPGL uh, file over here but as you can see it didn't work it's just blank and here's an example of the extra resolution I was telling you about I've got my ancient but awesome still almost unmatched these days done an awesome teardown video of this um, it's really fascinating anyway Keithley 617 programmable electrometer only four decimal places here but have a look over there we've got some extra digits on there let's see if we get there we go 102 there you go so there's some decent extra resolution to be had from your instrument here so there you go that's really worthwhile just that alone to get extra resolution out of instruments like this so anyway I think that's very cool and well worth the money yeah uh, if you're into old instruments like this I've done an example of um, I don't have it anymore I sold it on eBay but an old uh, HP multimeter that you could actually extract an extra digit of resolution from it if you actually got the reading over the GPIB so you know like valuable stuff like that so you turn like a a seven and a half digit meter into an eight and a half digit meter not all meters are like this of course if you extracted it over the GPIB instead of just on the uh, display so anyway I think that's pretty cool concept it simply just works I have been playing around with it and there uh, there's been a few times where it's um, like it doesn't respond and things like that if I actually uh, change like um, modes on the like GPIB modes and addresses and stuff like that and it kind of gets mixed up and uh, not so much locked up if you like treat it wrong and stuff like that but once if you got the right address and everything works um, then it's it's just it works great so I'm, I'm quite impressed by this thing I think it's really quite a neat thing and it's uh, 
well worth having if you got um, some old instruments like this. So anyway, I'll put in a link uh, down below and uh, you can buy it on eBay or maybe directly from the website. The website gets back up and running, but I hope you liked that. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up and as always, can discuss down below. Catch you next time. Thank <laughs> you.